Does God not live here anymore? That question is being asked more frequently these days. Once thriving churches are being closed because a growing number of people just don't attend as secularization sweeps over the West. The Vatican is determined to rescue these forgotten religious sites and not let them become discos or gymnasiums or even ice cream shops. The faith and culture correspondent for Crux, Claire Jean Grave, joins us now from Rome. Claire, you are on top of this story. I got to know from you, what steps are being planned by the Holy See to ensure that these buildings do maintain some spiritual value? Well, hi, Liz. First of all, the Vatican is bringing together a whole team that's comprised of the Pontifical Council for Culture, the Italian Bishops Conference, and the Gregorian University in Rome to come together in order to offer guidelines in collaboration from countries from all over the world that are concerned about their beautiful churches and what is going to happen to them and provide just uh, opportunities for other people who are facing these problems to understand how do you treat a place that is no longer the house of God? That's really the question. Claire, let's look at the sheer scope of this. Where is the issue most prominent? Because there are more than 100,000 churches in Italy alone. Yes, there is a constellation of churches in Rome. About 65,000 65, are still in the hands of the Vatican. And that's a lot to take care of. And if you consider that some are broken down, run down, secularization, leading to a lot of people not only not coming to the pews, but also priests who are not there to take care of it and take care of the upkeeping of some of these churches that have all the patronage of the arts that we are so fond of and that we're so proud of as Catholics. So obviously this represents a big challenge in Italy and that's why the Italian Bishops Conference has a special role to play. And there are some complexities to the issue, correct? What are some of the, the questions that the church must wrestle with in deciding how to handle underutilized churches? Well, listen, churches are beautiful spaces. They're gorgeous, high vaulted, complex, and sometimes it's just really hard to take care of. In, that, in those occasions, privates come in and they buy the property, especially if a, if a diocese is struggling financially. That means that you have to find a way to communicate with private entities and make sure that this place still is respected and treated as, as it's supposed to. And this is what the guidelines are really trying to offer. I'm going to put uh, some perspective to this, Claire, and hopefully you can help me. Given the massive scope of Catholic properties around the world, does the Vatican have an exact number of struggling or abandoned churches? Uh, unfortunately, it's very hard for the Vatican to keep track of mm. the large number of properties that it holds. But Nuncio Galantino, the card recently made cardinal by Pope Francis, former head of the Italian Bishop Conference, and now leading, leader of OPSA, which takes care of the Vatican treasuries, is the man who's on the job for this. So if there's one guy who's going to have the opportunity to look at the paperwork and know those numbers, that's, that's him. That's Galantino. Many of these buildings are adorned with magnificent artwork. How will these treasures be preserved? Well, of course, uh, conversation with private entities is very important but one thing that led to hope for these uh, rep spokesmen for the vatican was that lay people should be involved in trying to save their patronage and trying to save their traditions and culture so getting lay people on board is always a track to success for the vatican on many many issues oh claire thank you so much for putting this in perspective i really appreciate your insight as always and we'll be looking to hear more from you about this particular case thank you so much thank you Thank you.